Welcome everyone. The video here is meant to explore the structure of the cerebrum, one of the four major regions of the brain. So here we have a model of the brain and you can see the other three regions, the diencephalon, the brain stem, and the cerebellum have been removed. Uh, the purpose of this is to walk you through many of the structures and identifying features of the cerebrum. And I'm going to move through this fairly quickly. You should be working with this video and the lab activity that we've provided for Biology 260. And so you'll probably need to start and stop this video at times um, because I'm going to move faster than the reading in the activity. So um, let's first start by looking at the brain from a, the cerebrum from a superficial aspect. You can see it's divided into two hemispheres. There's a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere. And these two are deeply, deeply divided by what, it, by what is known as the longitudinal fissure. The anterior aspect of the brain is this area here, and this is the posterior aspect of the brain. Uh, in your lab activity, you're going to label those arrows, and if you look at the top here, you should notice that this end of the brain has a different width than this end of the brain. And this being the anterior parts here, um, that should help you orient yourself to the pictures that are there. Look closely at the pictures and don't automatically assume that the anterior or posterior end of the cerebrum is at one place or the other. Now, as we said, the brain is deeply divided into two hemispheres here. I'm going to take this apart so we can see. And we see kind of an amazing thing here. The surface on the inside, the side facing into this slice that's between the brain, is very much contoured like the outside of the cerebrum here. You can see the surface of the cerebrum is contoured with all these deep little valleys deep little indentations here. And those indentations are also here. So if we had a cerebrum like this and we sliced it in half, none of this area would be sliced because this is already a natural cut or a natural surface of the cerebrum. The only thing that would be sliced would be this feature that you see right here. And you can see those two areas. That is the only connecting link between these two hemispheres. They are completely separate. And um, we talk a little bit more about the right brain and the left brain. If you've had a psychology class, you've dealt with that too. This feature right here is known as the corpus callosum. And it's really just a wiring cable between the two um, hemispheres. Each hemisphere has lots and lots of neurons that are accomplishing the thinking tasks of the brain. Um, but this hemisphere needs to talk to this hemisphere. And this is what you would, might think of as the telephone cable. This is, uh, if we could look down very closely, it would look like um, a bundle of little wires that had all been cut that were communicating information from right to left and left to right. Now let's look at just one of these hemispheres from the outside and you can see that many people describe a single hemisphere as being shaped like a mitten. Do you know the difference between a glove and a mitten? Um, mitten is a, a piece of clothing for your hand where all of your fingers are enclosed in a single part and you can see there is a thumb-like sort of area here on the surface of one of these hemispheres of the cerebrum. This deep valley here that runs across the side of the 
cerebrum is called the lateral fissure. Many books today are calling it the lateral sulcus. I'm going to have us call this the lateral fissure. I think it's more descriptive. Um, the, there are two parts of the cerebrum here that actually divide so that we can see some internal structure. And what you want to notice here is that this is an area that would have been artificially cut. You can see the contours again of the surface tissues of the cerebrum and those surfaces go in deep. These, this is the location of the lateral fissure. This area here, if we had divided this, you would have to take a knife and slice this. And this is what all the neuro, neural tissue looks like from the inside. One of the things that you want to notice here is that we have two types of structure here. We have what is called gray matter. And that is this um, form of the structure here on the surface. It forms a little thin layer over the entire surface of the cerebrum. We call this cerebral cortex, but it is what we call gray matter. Now in the model, they've colored it pink, so um, I'm sorry it's not gray, but it's, it's pink. And then all of the substance down underneath that surface is called white matter. We want to distinguish white matter from gray matter. Later in our lecture, um, our second lecture on the nervous system, we will talk about the significance of gray matter and white matter. But just in a very simple way, all of your thinking, all of your, the processing that is done by your brain consciously is done right here on the surface. This, lay, this thin layer of surface here is um, where all of your thinking power is. The white matter is essentially the wiring of the brain. If this little area of gray matter needs to talk to this little area, we would find little like wires, little bits of cytoplasm that are running from here to here so that this area can talk to this area and coordinate its activities and create this complex thing that we call thought. So you want to notice gray matter and white matter. Um, and notice that all of these folds that you see here, the way that this surface is folded up and then down into a valley and then up into a ridge and down into a valley, um, all of these ridges and folds are unique to a brain. Um, no two people would have exactly the same folds in exactly the same ways. Um, what you want to think through here is the fact that this folding creates more of this gray matter. The gray matter is increased in size by folding it down into little valleys like that. And if there's more thinking, um, if there's more gray matter, then there's more of the thinking part here. And so the folds are creating um, a greater ability. We see more folds and more complex folds in smarter animals like ourselves. Uh, in simpler animals, there are less folds. So we have a general name for all of this folding that you see over the surface of the cerebrum. The um, ridges here that... Um, like this one or this one, all of these little ridges have little valleys between them. And a ridge here is called a gyrus, or some people pronounce it gyrus, but this, all of these folds that you see, every single one is a gyrus or a gyrus, and each little valley is referred to as a sulcus. So there are many, many gyri, plural, and many, many sulci, plural, over the surface of the cerebrum. A gyrus or a sulcus is like using the word street for a road that we drive on. Um, every street has a specific name, but they are all streets. Well, some of these gyri and sulci have specific names, 
but collectively they are just many, many sulci or many, many gyri. Gyri and sulci plural, gyrus and sulcus singular. So, the, uh, the last couple of things um, that we would do is we would notice of all of these gyri and sulci, there are several here that are unique. This is the lateral fissure. And if we look somewhere over the superior part of a cerebral hemisphere, we should find one sulcus that runs completely from the longitudinal fissure that would be here down to the lateral fissure here. And on this model, I see that that valley is right here. This one valley is referred to as the central sulcus. On either side of it then should be somewhat of a complete ridge and you see one here and one here. The one anterior to this is going to be called the precentral gyrus and the one behind it here is called the postcentral gyrus. Now this one sulcus here helps us divide the surface of the cerebrum into lobes and Initially, we're going to see four lobes over the surface of the cerebrum. The central sulcus here and the lateral fissure here are going to help us divide this up. All of this brain matter here anterior to the central sulcus is called the frontal lobe of the cerebrum. And the majority of this behind the central sulcus is known as the parietal lobe of the cerebrum. The very anterior aspect here, and there's not always a good line here. Some textbooks will tell you that there's a, a sulcus here that can divide, but it differs from brain to brain. But this anterior, or these, this posterior aspect is gonna be called the occipital lobe. And then this thumb-like feature here is called the temporal lobe. So the lateral fissure here divides the frontal and parietal from the temporal. Occipital is here, frontal here, parietal here. Okay? So there is a fifth lobe. You will find a fifth lobe to the cerebrum by opening this lateral fissure, which doesn't normally come open. But you can see that down underneath, the surface of the brain has folded itself down into a very deep valley here. And there's actually um, a folded surface to the cerebrum down deep in the lateral fissure underneath where it can't be seen for many, many years. Very little was known about this because it was so hidden it couldn't be investigated well. This fifth lobe of the cerebrum is referred to as the insula. So you'll want to um, be able to identify the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, the occipital lobe, and finally, down in here, the insula. Uh, the only other structures that we would identify here on a cerebrum then would be, um, and let's put these back together. I, this model has the insula separate, so I had to take a moment and put that in. Um, here is the frontal lobe and the temporal lobes of the cerebrum. And you can see these long, slender little cords here under the frontal lobe. These are known as the olfactory bulbs. And the olfactory bulbs, as the name would imply, have something to do with your sense of smell. They extend out over the nasal areas and drop little nerves down into your nasal passages so that you can hear. Um, and then finally, one other structure. If we were to put the, if we were to put the cerebellum in here, like so, 
um, and the brain stem were here. There is a deep valley here between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And that deep valley is called the transverse fissure. The cerebellum is not connected directly to the cerebrum. There are connections, but the wiring from the cerebellum goes into the brain stem, and the, that wiring then goes up to the cerebrum. So they are only connected through the brain stem. And this then is the transverse fissure. 